in the previous videos we have created the graphs using the torch tensors so here the question is can we use python iterables such as lists and numpy arrays in place of tensors so we have already seen how to create a graph using the tensor as an input but let's see can we create the dgl graph using the python iterables and numpy arrays okay so let's just try that so first i'll just import numpy here so i have already imported dgl and torch earlier so i'll just import on numpy okay so after importing numpy i'll just create uh, you know the same source node and destination node ids but instead of uh, keeping them as torch tensors so now i'll keep them as numpy arrays okay so i'll just uh, you know remove this torch dot tensor and i'll keep this as numpy dot array okay and also i'll keep this as numpy dot array okay numpy dot array so now let's just create the graph so i'll create a graph i'll just put it as graph np so again we use the same method dgl dot graph which accepts a tuple of tensors but now i'll pass a tuple of numpy arrays okay i'll pass source node numpy arrays and destination node numpy array okay destination node numpy array so i'll pass and i'll just print this graph let's see what happens okay you can see it has created the graph okay so that means we can use the numpy arrays to create the dgl graph so we we haven't passed any tensors to the dgl graph right so now let now let's just try to see the types of uh, node ids and edge ids that we have i'll just print graph np dot nodes okay so we haven't passed any tensors we only passed the numpy arrays okay so if you type the node c it is giving a tensor okay you might be thinking okay we haven't explicitly passed the node ids so the dgl graph method might have created this internally yeah that's that's valid point now let's see graph np dot edges we explicitly passed the graph edges as numpy arrays now let's see what it returns did you see it returned tensors that means even if we pass the source node ids and destination node ids as numpy arrays internally the dgl graph method is converting them into torch tensors okay so you can obviously use uh, you know this numpy arrays for quick prototyping but uh, the tensors are more efficient as you can see here tensor types are generally preferred throughout dgl apis because of two reasons the first reason they efficiently store they efficiently store the tensors internally okay and also uh, having the tensors in place we can explicitly define the data types such as like in 32 tensors in 64 tensors we have seen in the previous video and also we can define the device context information such as whether the tensor should be in cpu or the tensor should be in gpu you know like uh, on GPU, the tensors works like very, very good, like much better than numpy arrays. So that's why using tensors is preferred. But still, there is an option that we can pass numpy arrays as an input. Okay, let's quickly see whether we can pass Python list as an input. Okay, so I'll reuse the same code. I'll reuse the same code, but instead of keeping this as numpy array, I'll keep it as a Python list. Okay, here also I'll keep it as a Python list. Okay, so I'll just uh, call it as uh, graph python. Okay, I'll call it as graph python. I'll just print it. So you can see, again we got the same same schema with five nodes and eight edges. I'll just quick quickly print uh, the edges. Okay, we passed the python lists, but again uh, in the similar way that it converted numpy arrays to torch tensors. Here also the DGL methods convert the Python lists into torch tensors. Okay. So the summary is, yes, we can use Python lists and, uh, you know, numpy arrays in place of tensors, but they're, but they're not as efficient as tensors. So the preferred way is to use tensors throughout all the DGL APIs. Thanks.